So we're in this series called Change Makers, and this series is really defining what it looks like to be a Christian, a one who looks like Christ. He called us to be change makers, to be change makers. Last week, we talked about vision, and I hope this week you really prayed and leaned in to what is the vision for your life. I hope that you leaned in and heard what God's word is for your life, what God wants you to be accomplishing, going after, pursuing. So how many know vision gives value to your purpose, right? Without vision, there is no value to life. There's no value to your purpose. But when you have vision, and I'm not talking about the vision that you can see where you can see all the letters all the way down to the littlest thing. God knows I'd fail that test. I'm talking about vision, not when your eyes are open, vision for when your eyes are closed. What you see when your eyes are shut, what God shows you that might not look like your current situation, but I believe that every person, God wants to show you a vision for your life, a vision for your family, your business. You fill in the blank. God wants to give you a vision so that you come alive. I'm here on assignment, and you are too. It's like the story of the master who left and gave talents. Every one of us has been given talents. Some maybe five, some two, some one. It doesn't matter how much you have currently. All that matters is what you're doing with it. And so when you look at your life and you look at the purpose and why we're here on earth, and you really start to study and just like, why am I here? Why are we here? We start to realize that God has given each one of us a specific vision for our lives. He's given us something in our hands. All throughout the Bible, you'll see that God gave David a sling. He gave Moses a staff, right? He placed something in their hands, and he's given you something in your hands. And currently, God wants to make that vision come to life. God A God-given vision. I know there are some incredible dreams and visions that God is going to not only make happen, but come alive in your life in this season. I know that God wants to inspire you. See, there's a difference between motivation and inspiration. Motivation, you need to be motivated by something But as soon as that thing is over, you need to be motivated by something else. Inspiration is what comes from within. That's what God wants to do with you. He wants to inspire you to come alive, to plug into what God sees. I think about the story of Abraham. And when God called Abraham to be the father of many nations, y'all know the story? God called him out of his normal life into a life of purpose with a vision. But the scripture says that God called him out of the tent and he said, Abraham, look up and look at the stars. Very interesting that he had to get him out of his current situation, his current position, his current posture, and position him to see the vastness of the vision. Sometimes God has to move us move things into a position and a posture where we can see the vastness of what he's called us to. Because what God has called us to is way bigger than what we can imagine or think. A God-sized vision. And I wonder how many in this room, God wants to spark that God-sized vision. Because if you can change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? When you change the way that you look at things, you change the way you look at your marriage, you change the way you look at your job, you change the way you look at your neighborhood, you change the way you look at it. When you change the way you look at the thing, the thing you're looking at starts to change. See, it's like this. Like sometimes we come into our situation, we're like, well, if we only had another, you fill in the blank. If I only had another wife, it'd be way different. 
She just don't love me like she used to. If I only had new kids, Lord, is there an exchange program? We can return, you know, pick a new model. Doesn't work like that. If I only had a new job, new church, new financial situation, a new health, if I only had a new blank, sometimes we approach life like this where God wants to move us and say, come out of the tent. You're looking up and you're caught up by the ceiling. But I want to show you the vastness of my vision for where you currently are. I want to show you what I see. I love God because he says, Abraham, try to count the stars. I mean, that's kind of funny when you think about it. Abraham, count the stars. (laughs) Abraham's probably like, "Uh, no, there's no way. That's the vastness of what God wants to do. And I believe that there, there are so many things that God wants to birth out of this church. Can I speak that over you today? Can I speak that over your life, over your calling? That God wants to birth visions that are way bigger than this world has going on already. And I believe that he's going to do it in you. I believe, man, there are apps to be made. There's music to be produced there's books to be written, blogs to be made. There's, there's, there's something that God wants to birth, a business, a family, that God wants to do through you. See, God has shown me, y'all, revival is coming to Philadelphia. And you know what revival is? Revival is the children of God awakening to their purpose. Revival is Christians get an attitude knowing why they're here. Get an attitude when they pray. Getting an attitude when they go through life. Knowing that they are here for a reason. A change maker is one who's on mission. It's a God-given vision and the vision drives the agenda. I want to talk today about making the vision work. Come on, help me out. Say, make the vision work. Make the vision work. If you would, grab out your Bibles, grab out your journals. How many are so thankful that God's an individual God? And what that simply means is he doesn't shout from the mountains. He whispers in your ear. It's incredible to me to see that when a message is proclaimed or the word of God is spoken, how many different ways he interprets it to you because he knows your situation. He counted your hairs this morning, right? He knows everything about you. He knows what pain you're going through, what joys you've been through, everything that's in your hands right now. He knows exactly what it is. But when you catch a vision, you catch his fire and his passion. Look at this scripture. I I wanna look at this scripture together and notice something with me about how God views you. All right? This is how God views you in this world. If you ever wanted to know God's perspective on you, maybe you've heard this scripture before, but but read it with new eyes today. Isaiah chapter 60, verse number one. It says, arise and shine. Now, we could stop right there because two words dominate what Christians are to this world. To arise means to get up and to shine, which means to Put out the darkness. God has called you specifically with a vision on your life to do two things, rise up and to shine, to become one who stands and makes a move and become one who shines a light into the darkness. He says, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. How many are so thankful that God uses his children to carry out the vision of light on the earth? Man, maybe some of you are are so confused at where you are right now, or maybe some of you are so clear, but I know that this, that God has made you the light in where you are. He's made you the light to make a difference where you are. So it matters that you catch the vision. All right, how do we make vision stick? How do we make vision 
happen. I don't know if you've ever been given something from God and it's a vision and it's an amazing and you're like, wow, I can't wait. This is huge. This is great. And then you're in the place and maybe, maybe you're at that place where you haven't seen the vision come to be yet and it's been a long time. Or maybe, you know, you, you don't, you, you've been going at it and you've been staying the course, but how do you, how do you stick to it? How do you stay passionate? How do you stay fired up? I believe that we find the answer in Habakkuk. Now, Habakkuk is a prophet. Y'all know about Habakkuk? Have you read Habakkuk? You got to read Habakkuk sometimes. It's a little confusing because you have this conversation. And the prophet Habakkuk, usually the prophets would get a word from God and speak to the people. But Habakkuk was a different book. This is a prophet speaking to God and God speaking back to Habakkuk. And we see this conversation. We're almost a fly on the wall getting in on what he is talking to God about. But we find in Habakkuk 1, Habakkuk crying out to God for all the injustices he's seen. And we as a church, we find ourselves there. You might find yourself there in your, in your realm of influence, where you are. Maybe you see the injustices and God has broken your heart for a specific thing. That's called vision, my friend. If he breaks your heart for something, if you're broken for the next generation or broken for orphans or broken for uh, a single parents or broken for the homeless or broken for, you've captured a piece of God's heart and you have a vision. Habakkuk caught something in his heart and he was crying out to God saying, God, we need you to move. We need you to intervene. Don't be far from it. And I, I want to I see something in Habakkuk's posture and position because I think this is crucial. Every Christ follower, every change maker, if you're going to stay the course and you're going to perform this vision that God has given you, which is way bigger than you, way bigger than your resources, way bigger than your bank account or anything that you could come up with, this is way bigger than you, my friend. So here's the posture that we find Habakkuk in. He says in verse 1 of chapter 2, he says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. I will stand at my watch. What was Habakkuk doing? He was posturing himself in the place he knew. What did God already say? Here's your watch. What had God already done? Put him in a place. So what did he say? I'm gonna stand here at my watch. I'm gonna stand guard at what God's given me now. I'm gonna do what I know to do. That's what God's calling you to do right now. Have a posture where you do what you know to do. What part of the vision do you already know? Do it. What part do you already have underway? Do it. Faithfully. Be in that space. But notice how Habakkuk was leaned in. And this is the secret sauce. This is the secret sauce. Because how many know vision has to be validated by the one who made it? Vision has to be validated by the one who is making it happen, putting it into motion. Because God right now is looking for people all across the world to fill with vision. Because God never performs his purposes without using his children to perform them. So Habakkuk finds himself in a place where he's watching and he's at the ramparts. Now, the ramparts was the walls of the castle. It was the place to, to go because they were under siege. This was a, play, a time of violence. And so he finds himself in a place watching, waiting on God, saying, God, I'm ready. And that's the place you had to find yourself. It's the place where you wake up, you go before God, you say, God, clarify the vision. And look at the Lord's reply to him. He says this, right down the revelation. Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald, 
The one who reads it can run with it. Number one, you want to make your vision stick? Write this down. Well, you write this down to write it down. You got to write it down. Write the vision. Write it down. Put it down on paper. I tell you, this is a secret to success that the world has caught. And I don't know very many successful people in the world that don't have a vision board. They don't have somewhere where they write out the vision for their life, what they're going after, what they want to achieve. That's why it's so important. That's why we do it in our, our gatherings. The girls I know every year, they make their vision boards. Guys, we got to get on it, you know, make it together, do some crafts, get some silly glue out. But make your vision board and, and write it down. Put it down. Because when we write, studies have shown, when you write, you actually organize your thoughts. And so many of you, you have a vision, but it's all up here. It's all in your dreams. It's all in your thoughts. And you've been thinking and contemplating, and you know what God's called you to do, but it's just all up here. And you don't know what to do next. You don't know how to put it to action. The first thing you do is write it down. He told Habakkuk, write it down. I'm telling you, my wife knows this. If, the, if you don't put something on the grocery list, it's not getting gotten, Okay. Now, there might be other things that get on that list because of the sale prices or it says new or something that captures my attention. But if you don't put the item on the list, it's not getting gotten. I promise you. I will not think of it. And that's the same way with, with your vision. If you don't write it down, it's not getting done. If you don't write this thing down, and this is the purpose and plan of God for your life. So this is important, my friend. Again, we're on assignment. God has called you to this church. He's called you to this city for a reason. I mean, I look out and I see the POs. Moved you all the way across the United States of America. Goodness gracious, you couldn't be further from California. Oh, you could keep going. North Carolina, maybe, over there. God moved you all the way to the East Coast. Why? You're on assignment. He said, who will go for me? Ah, P.O.s. That's it. And you're sitting in this church. You're here on assignment. God's put you here for a reason. It wasn't by chance you flipped through that Instagram thing or saw that video or however you found this church. It's not by accident. You're on assignment. God filled you with something. Write it down. Write it down. Put it down so that the vision can come to life. The next thing he says, and this is very crucial, if you want to stick to the vision and keep it alive and go after what God has called you to do, you got to make it plain. Make it plain. Write it down. Write down the vision, the big vision, and then make it plain. Detail the junk out of that thing. And this might take some time. Okay, this, this will take time. Let's just be honest. As you start to write, you're going to start organizing your thoughts. You're going to get stuck sometimes and say, well, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I don't know how to approach that. And that's when the Bible talks about many, uh, a wise man has many counselors around him. And so you sit in the midst of counselors and you ask questions and say, well, how did you and, and how did you approach this and how did you solve this issue? And you become someone who is making it plain. Why? What are you doing? You're breaking it down so that you can run. When you, call, when you write down details, you create a path to run on. Come on, somebody. Some of you have the biggest vision. God has given you a great calling, but you have no path to run on. And so you'll stay there. I, I'm guilty of this. My wife will tell you I'm guilty of dreaming and staying in the clouds. You know, and, and that, that's one of the things that I pray over all the time. God, help me to make it plain. Because I'm good at dreaming. I'm good at being inspired. I'm good at getting a God vision. But, but the part that I get stumbled on and I have to pray through and say, God, help me, is to make it plain. Start writing out how we're going to get this done. Okay, God, you called us here to save a city. You called us here to bring influences together, the eight spheres of influence. You called us here to serve our city well to save the nations, to awake a generation of those who are on fire for God. But how do we do that? We make it plain. We write the details. Have you ever seen one of these when you're maybe a kid? 
the viewfinder, and you put, you put in the cards. And when I was a kid, I don't know about you, but I was a Disney movie. Uh, well, actually, Disney movies were the only ones we could watch as kids because we were super sheltered. So we were loving those, you know, the G-rated Jungle Books and Toy Story and all that stuff. I used to have a Toy Story one, though. And what you do is you put in these cards in case you're, you're too young to know what this is. You put the cards in there, and then when you look through the viewfinder, you can see the image, and you flip through the pictures. Now, these are way cooler now than they were when I was a kid. This is 3D. As you're looking at it, it's coming at your face. Pretty incredible. What happens is you have to turn it towards, somebody help me, the light. That's right. Because if you go towards the darkness, the picture goes away. It starts to fade. And this is what happens if you have vision, but all of a sudden you stop meeting with the king. You stop writing the plans down. You don't have it in front of you. And God wants to make it clear to you. And clarity comes from staring at the light. In fact, I think it's John. This says the revelation of the glory of God is revealed in the face of Christ. Isn't that incredible that everything we need comes, all the clarity for our vision, the clarity for our life comes when we stare at him. We say, God, what is the vision? And we look directly into the light. And then it becomes clear what we are to run with. He said, write it down. Make it plain. Make it plain. So that every time. Struggling here. So that every time you go back to the vision, you remember why you're here. You know what happens? All day long, you have vision-driven agenda. Pastor, what's a vision-driven agenda? I'm glad you asked. It's the filter through which everything goes through. If you don't have a filter, it's like Katie said it so well today. If you don't start centered and understand why you're here, then you will constantly just put out fires. You'll be at everybody's mercy. What fire do you have? What fire do you have? What fire do you have? Your boss will come up with something. Kids will come up with something. Family comes up. It's not their fault. It's the way life runs, okay? Successful people, those who are children of God, who are getting the purpose and plans of God down, come to God and say, clarify the vision. Let me write it down. What am I to do? And then that is the agenda that I run by. So then all day long, your vision-driven agenda becomes that thing. If your call is to raise a family that loves God, serves God, and children that are going to change the world, then everything you do throughout the day comes through that agenda. My agenda is to serve, to love. All the to-dos come with that knowing who you are. It's the revelation. Revelation to know your purpose I love John chapter 8. I just literally came by this this morning. I was reminded of it. And John chapter 8 verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. This is Jesus talking. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Let me tell you, my friend, if you feel like you're lost, if you feel like you don't know where you're going, or maybe you have a vision, but you need clarity and you need to stick to it, I'm telling you, write it down, make it plain, look at the light, and that light will start to clarify. He says, look to me, follow me. When you look at me, when you follow me, you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. The light of life. Y'all, August 29th. August 29th is a very special day. We are headed back to our OG home, the Punchline Comedy Club, where we tell jokes about churches. Not for real, that's what a guy said when we were telling him about our church. He's like, oh, you, you tell jokes about churches. 
Hey, whatever brings you, bro. If that, if that uh, tickles your, your fancy, come on out. But God's given us a vision and an opportunity now to reach and bless the community and neighborhood of Fishtown. And that's the beauty about the calling of God in your life. God called us here. And so we were faithful and we reached and loved and blessed this community as long as we're here. And we'll continue to do that till we leave. And we're going to Fishtown. We have the opportunity to love and serve and build. And I want to ask you, as a church family, to pray about what is your part in that? What has God called you to do? How are you getting involved? with what God wants done on the earth. Get a vision. Be broken for what God's broken for. Get eyesight for what he sees. Because when you stare at him, you realize he is broken for the situation you're in. And he wants you to go after it. It's one thing you have to realize in this whole thing why you might feel stuck sometimes, why you might feel like, I just can't wait. I just can't make it to that promised land that God's called me to. Maybe feel like it's the 40 years in the wilderness. Hey, vision leaks. Vision leaks. So you read the vision daily. You bring it out. You put it before you, and you read it daily. You ignite your fire every day. Like Paul told Timothy, fan into flame. That's your job. Fan into flame the gift of God that's on you, the vision that God has given you. You see, we build strategy off of the stair. We build the strategy of the vision off the stair of the Savior. Because if we stare at him and we look at his heart, and we realize heaven's agenda, heaven's plans. We say, God, you spoke kingdom come. That's your will for this year. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. And you've called us to make change, to become change makers, to know ourselves and to come alive to who you are. And so we build our strategy off the stare. We stare into his eyes. Can I encourage you today to stare at him? Can I encourage you to stare into his eyes? To start to break and to bleed what he's broken for? To start to be consumed with what his heart is beating for? To start to capture his love for this city? To start to capture his heart for your neighborhood, for your coworkers, for your fellow students? To capture his heart so that you're broken, so that you walk around with a vision-driven agenda. Last thing, I want you to write these down. Here's what clarity gives you in your vision. When you have a God-given vision, and you write it down, you make it plain, and you stare at the light, and you let him clarify for you, clarity brings boldness to run. To run. Boldness to risk to try, to ask, to step, to make that step. Clarity will give you boldness to say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care if I fail. I don't care. I I'm going to risk because I'm confident in this word. Clarity, when he clarifies, this is why you're here. Then I remember when he clarified to me and Ashley that we were called to Philadelphia. It was a moment of total boldness. <laughs> We looked at each other and we said, what if? What if no one goes with us? What if we don't have the right finances? What if we can't get our business to get off the ground? What if? All these what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And then the confidence of the clarity. We're like, you know what? No, we know it's him. It was like Peter. He said, Jesus out on the water, if it's you, if this is truly you, bid me come. And all he needed was that confirmation. Peter, come. Oh, that's the clarity. All right, I'm out. Later, guys, enjoy the boat because I'm made to walk on water. I know that there's some in this room. You've been sitting in the boat. Maybe some of you are even halfway out. 
You're like dabbling in the water. God wants to clarify for you so that you can have the boldness to risk. To say, bye-bye past. Bye-bye comfort zone. Bye-bye ways that I used to know. Bye-bye Christianity that's lame. Christianity that's, that's formless. Christianity that has no life, no fire, no more. I'm risking taking a step. It gives you boldness to unlock to unlock doors that haven't been gone through yet. God wants to give you the boldness to unlock doors that others are trying to open, but just can't. But they're waiting on the one that's been poured vision into. That's you. And you're getting the clarity to say, yes, I understand God, the strategy, because you're in the stair and you're realizing this is heaven's plans and heaven has more resources than I know what to do with. And so I'm gonna trust you, God. And so you come to the situation with clarity, boldness to unlock the door. You're gonna unlock doors for people who have been broken by the church, broken by religion, could care less about Jesus because of past hurt, past relationships that have tainted who he is. God's gonna give you a way to love through the pain. That's why we're here. We're here to love through the pain, to redefine who Jesus is to Philadelphia. Can't tell you how many people I talk to. Yeah, I'm a Christian. And then I get in more into the conversation and they're not. Yeah, they say it's the label Christian, but they don't know Jesus. How many know Jesus is the only reason we're here? He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Nobody can get to the Father except through me. We have to make a path. And clarity will give you the boldness to unlock doors, to risk, to come out to a space that's uneasy, uncomfortable, and to unlock the doors. And the last thing, the boldness to nurture, to nurture the vision. See how I did that? Are you in to run, to risk, to unlock and to nurture, to come back to the vision daily and say, all right, what can we do differently? All right, what do I need to clarify? All right, God, I need your help because I'm getting stuck here. And you nurture, you pour into, you say, all right, how can we look at this differently? How can we get more people around it? How can we pour more resources into it? Because this is the vision of God and I won't stop until I see it happen. Can I tell you, this church, we won't stop until we see every person in this city know Jesus. God, y'all can't hear me today, can you? We won't stop because there are so many people out there that are dealing with suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety. They're dealing with their last moments. They're coming to the end of themselves. And they need to realize it is Jesus that unlocks the peace, the joy, the love that they're searching for. And we have the answer. That's why it's so important that you get caught in the stare. Say, God, what do you care for? What are you after? What's heaven's agenda? What do you break for? What do you bleed for? God, break us for it.